Hey there, Upper Evangelists and Outsole Grinders. It's Ed Marshmallow Bud here. Today, examining two of 2021's top of the tree race options the Vaporfly Next% 2 versus the Adios Pro 2. It's a sequel shoe off to the bitter end. Which will come out victorious? Only time will tell. Thanks for tuning in today guys, I really do appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications when we launch those new videos for you. And it really does help the channel out too if you give this video a thumbs up like and also share it with your running buddies. Danke schön. So I've got a reasonable number of faster miles into these two pairs right now and can give a good comparative study for you. Weight wise a small advantage to the Vaporfly Next% Percent 2. In my UK size 11 this one clocks in at 246 grams which is about 8.7 ounces. Around about an ounce heavier 9.6 ounces is the Adios Pro 2. That's about 271 ounces. There's a couple of grams difference between the two shoes, the left and right shoe and my size. Although I have seen a few people with about 8 or 9 grams difference which is odd. I know for race shoes people like to have the lightest option possible possible don't they but I mean it's still pretty light for the Adios Pro 2. Pricing though is the exact opposite with the Adios Pro 2 coming in at 180 earth credits UK and 29 earth credits extra on top for the Vaporfly Next% Percent 2. That is for the base level model there are several different colorways now some of which go up to about 229 earth credits. If you're particularly bothered about the aesthetics of the shoe I don't think there's anything different about them they're just different colors different options. We'll go with the upper first. I find the Cellar Mesh 2 on the Adios Pro 2 closer actually to Vapor Weave, which was on the first version of the Next Percent. The upper here really is foot hugging. I really like the fact you can dial it in and get a really good lock over the top of the foot. Imagine the wonderful late John Candy giving you a nice warm embrace. That's what it's like. Now, not everybody's a fan of this new mesh material on the Next Percent 2. It's a little more coarse. It kind of feels like they've borrowed it from a camping store. I think personally it's a little bit more comfortable, but I think the big difference is this rubber piece here doesn't creep over the top of the toes quite so much, which decreases the perceived length of the shoe. Here it just feels quite a bit longer. The Adios Pro 2 to me does run a touch longer than most other Adidas shoes. The 11 and a half here does have quite a considerable amount of room for me in the toe box. Though this is a marathon race shoe we have to consider that and we all know what happens when you hit about 15 or 16 miles in a marathon. The foot size then isn't going to be quite the same as your foot size when you started off. So that extra length does allow a slightly thicker sock for me which is ideal. That's my preference really if I'm going to run a considerable distance. Not sure I've got a win here I do like the uppers in both shoes both are light containing and very minimal which is what you want on a marathon race shoe neither of these two uppers retain an awful lot of moisture which is ideal certainly if you're running in the UK I'm going to call it a draw on upper midsole 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 now so that next percent to midsole was well documented by now. I recently ran a 1936 5k in this one. Not far off my personal best really. That was just on my own running around the park. And you have to say the ZMAX midsole and that carbon plate here is really hard to beat. Though regular viewers will remember I did opt for the Adios Pro 2 when I took on the Martok 10k back at the start of July. That shoe performed very well that day. Although you have to say the Light Strike Pro midsole material here isn't quite as forgiving as the Next Percent. Nike's flagship formula really does have a little edge over this one. Although they're just different in terms of the way that they feel and the way they respond. It almost does feel like you're bouncing along when you pick up speed wearing the Adios Pro 2. Is that something to do with the carbon rods that are in the forefoot? Is it something to do with the plate in the heel? I don't know, but it really does feel like it's propelling you along a little bit more than the next percent. I feel like I'm getting a bit more air. I have a feeling that both the midsole materials here are going to hold up just great over the course of time. Though I have seen various people with rod related issues. Some people have complained about strange clicking noises coming from the energy rods. They're worried that perhaps one of the rods is broken. Is it something to do perhaps with the cut back nature of the midsole here? Where you've got those exposed rods now. It does make this version of the shoe a little bit more flexible over the Adios Pro Original. No such sonic sullying sounds in my pair so far. I find the midsole material and the next percent just ridiculous really. You can run some huge numbers of miles at high paces and the next day your legs just feel fine. They feel fresh almost. Does the midsole material here in the next percent provide a little bit more return on your energy investment? I would suggest yes. 
but I would like to run a comparative 5K over the same route in the Adios Pro 2 to see how it feels. So I think in terms of midsole, I'm leaning towards the next percent two here as the winner. I'm feeling perhaps that the original Adios Pro was a better comparison against it. I think the Adios Pro 2 is perhaps something slightly different. I think where Adidas are pushing the boundaries a little bit in the Adios Pro 2 and the Prime X, they've reached another level, perhaps a little bit closer to the Alpha Fly. If you run in that shoe, you'll know that you can get a lot of air. You do feel like you're flying at points, especially when you're as tall as me. I always had in my mind that perhaps the Adios Pro 2 had a little more surface area, but they're practically the same. I think perhaps minimizing the foam sometimes isn't always the best option. I do find the Adios Pro Original a little bit more supportive with that cupped foam around the heel. And they remove that on the Adios Pro 2 to perhaps try and streamline the shoe a little bit. So I've got to give a win on midsole to the next percent too. Outsole now. Outsole wise, the Continental rubber on the underbelly of the Adios Pro 2 absolutely smokes that foam rubber on the next percent too. This stuff feels like it's been lifted straight off an F1 car, but I've got to be honest, I'd love to see what the waffle outsole's like on the next percent. But I'm not going to fork up 250 Earth Credits UK to get a custom Nike by you version. It might improve the traction and grip a little bit, but would it eclipse the tacky grip? that we get here on the Adios Pro 2, I would say unlikely. Just don't think that 250 pounds is worth a gamble, really, that it might just improve the shoe very slightly. Plus, I have to wait about four or five weeks to get it, which is not ideal in any way. Maybe as well with the waffle outsole, the increased frequency of lugs on the bottom of the shoe, it might up the weight as well. I've picked out rocks, glass, all sorts of things from the bottom of the rubber on the next percent too already. Hopefully Nike will look to use some sort of more durable material in the future with this model. As such, in all conditions that I've tested it so far, the Adios Pro 2 Continental Rubber here wins on outsole. Time to talk value. When it comes to value, I think we've got to talk about the durability and the longevity of the shoe. Is it something you can frequently put on foot and utilize for some daily training as well? Or are you going to be too worried about destroying the precious midsole foam? A lot of people worry that the magicals start to disappear from some of these shoes if you use them too much. I haven't really found that at all, to be honest. I think the current 2021 versions of these race shoes are actually very durable. I don't think it's the same as where we had the old versions of the 4%, the Vaporfly original and the Flyknit version, the midsole there really did seem to disintegrate before your very eyes. These seem a whole lot more durable, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. I've got a pair of the Next Percent Ekaden edition I picked up early in 2020. They've got about 100 miles on them so far, and they just seem to get better and better the more I use them. I've used them in some quite harsh conditions as well, very warm weather, very cold weather, wet and dry, and the midsoles are absolutely fine. Feels better than ever. The Light Strike Pro material within the Adios Pro 2, and the original for that matter, so great durability so far. Very little compression at all to the midsole. A little bit of aesthetic wear here and there, but that's to be expected. Just no real degradation so far at all. Neither of them feel any worse than they did at the start. In fact, I think they probably take about 10 to 20 miles before they actually start to loosen up a little bit. So yeah, feel great now. Might explain a few reviewers that picked them up and ran a few miles in them and didn't really like them all that much. I know I didn't like the Adios Pro 2 when I first tried it. It really didn't work for me, that shoe, and it seemed to break in a little bit. So a bit of a quandary, really, as to which of these two shoes presents the best value. Gotta be honest, though, I think I'd give it to the next percent, too. I feel that even down to a 5K, it's a banging option. A little bit lighter, and I feel it benefits the runner by the increased amount of propulsion, cushion, and return from the midsole. I feel that all of those properties perhaps only really unlock in the Adios Pro 2 after about seven or eight miles. Yes, it is a touch more expensive than the Adios Pro 2, but I think if you can fork up the extra earth credits, it is worth it. That's coming from a man that loves the Adios Pro 2 as well, so it's quite hard for me to come to this decision, but I think it just does present slightly better value than the Adidas model this time. So a win for the next percent too, in terms of value. So that gives us a tie in terms of upper, the midsole, the next percent takes it. Outsole, gotta be the Adidas. And a win for the next percent on value. I think the next percent too just edges it this time, though I was flying earlier on in this shoe. So there's not an awful lot in it, guys. There really isn't. Have you got both or either of these models? What do you make of them? 
Do you concur with my views or do you disagree? That's okay. I like to see your thoughts and opinions down in the comments. A quick musical interlude for you. I was really heartened to see that Richard Hawley was heading back out on tour. Sheffield's finest with a beautiful voice and very skillful guitar player too. He's a real gear man as well. He loves all of his guitars, amplifiers. I know at one point he had some wonderful uh, semi-acoustic instruments. And I think he's a keen acoustic guitar player as well. Apparently you used to be able to find him in certain pubs sometimes and people used to go and chat with him for hours about all his guitar equipment. I gotta be honest, I'd love to do that. I might travel to Sheffield just to see if I can find him one day. Seems like a really fantastic bloke. After hearing about his new tour, I picked out his album from 2007 called Ladies Bridge. Favourite tracks on here are Valentine and Sirius. Sirius is kind of like a rockabilly tune, I guess. And Valentine sounds like something that wouldn't have been out of place on a Roy Orbison album. These beautiful stirring arrangements, lovely strings, and these wonderful dynamic swells throughout the track. All backed with the beautiful Hawley voice. It's just, Richard Hawley's voice is just phenomenal. It's just like an authentic sort of sound. And you know it's him straight away when you hear it, within seconds. If you haven't heard any of his material, guys, you're missing out. Go and check him out. Richard Hawley, this album's called Ladies Bridge. Okay, thanks for sticking with me to the end of today's video, guys. It's very much appreciated. If you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications when I roll those new videos out for you. And it helps the channel out an immense amount if you give this video a thumbs up like and also share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Budd and I'll be seeing you.